Hello and welcome to the Monday, September 25th, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Guy looked at uh, some honeypot hits that uh, he saw in his honeypots, but uh, we also saw some interesting trends earlier this year when it comes to Laravel. Laravel is a framework for PHP, quite uh, popular among uh, PHP developers, and yes, it had vulnerabilities. Uh, Guy notes in 2021, there was, for example, a vulnerability that was uh, made known, but uh, these uh, attacks or these scans that we are seeing are not actually going after anything sort of Laravel specific. Instead, they're looking for .env files, essentially. .env files often used uh, to store environment variables that are then used uh, to provide credentials like API keys and such for the application. We have seen that before, and I think a few months ago, we already had sort of a diary about these kind of configuration files. They're certainly being searched for and uh, something that you should pay attention to. These files should not be accessible in your document route. If you have files like this at all, they should be stored outside the document route or, well, even better, take a look at how what other mechanisms your particular framework, uh, your language makes available for credential storage, in particular in the cloud and such, you often have secret managers uh, that you can use instead of storing credentials in a simple file on the file system. And Palo Alto's Unit 42 has an interesting blog post about a fake proof of concept that was released to GitHub for CVE 2023-4477. This was the WinRAR vulnerability from about a month or so ago. So a high profile vulnerability. Lots of people were looking for proof of concept exploits. And this one may have been downloaded several times by people either maliciously looking for proof of concept exploits or researchers trying uh, to figure out how uh, this particular vulnerability could possibly be exploited. Well, uh, they got definitely more than they bargained for, but they didn't get a WinRAR exploit. The exploit that uh, was actually sort of used as a template for uh, this malicious uh, backdoor uh, was an exploit for CVE 2023-2515-7. Totally unrelated to WinRAR, uh, this is some kind of geo server, a query language uh, exploit. The comments were removed from the original exploit, basically hiding that this was not actually the exploit people were looking for. And then additional code was added that would download the back door. In this particular case, it was uh, the uh, Venom Rat, as it's uh, sometimes called. The uh, Python code that uh, actually user executed basically had a little bit of PowerShell in it that would download the RAT and then install it. Now, due to some of the modification made to the original exploit, this exploit did not do the one thing that people were looking for, and that's exploiting anything. Even the original exploit uh, was no longer really working properly. The only thing this particular Python script apparently did was install uh, the uh, backdoor and uh, then basically set up uh, communication with a command and control server. There's more details, including IP addresses, host names, and such, in uh, the uh, blog post from Palo Alto. Kind of interesting, the domain name being used here is checkblacklistworks.eu. That's a somewhat, I guess, plausible uh, domain name for an exploit. So uh, certainly something that could easily uh, be missed if you're sort of quickly scanning through the code. What sort of would have alerted me is just the fact that there is PowerShell code inside the Python script for something that's just supposed to create a WinRAR uh, file. And for those of you who still occasionally travel, uh, there is an interesting blog post by Akamai about attacks against hotels that uh, then are going after hotel guests. 
pretty interesting attack chain here. The attacker is basically compromising hotel networks. We certainly have seen some high profile cases lately, like in Vegas, but they're not actually going after a ransomware. Instead, they're then stealing credentials from these hotels. They're then using those credentials to access the booking systems. And then they're using the booking system to actually send messages to hotel guests or people with reservations with fake links uh, to uh, what they claim to be a booking.com website. Uh, but uh, of course, that's where the phishing then happens. Really dangerous because the message is coming from uh, the legitimate uh, platform. So uh, hotel guests and they know that uh, you have a reservation in this particular ho hotel, so uh, there's additional information that makes this more plausible. But then the link is going uh, to uh, the uh, phishing uh, website. Interesting attack, and uh, don't really see a lot of sort of these semi-targeted attacks. But uh, yeah, definitely be aware of this. Uh, not really sure how to protect yourself well from these kind of scams, other than going uh, to an not the booking.com URL. There's really no good indicator here. And of course, often if hotels, for example, redirect you uh, to your booking that you made with a site like booking.com, they often sort of use their own sort of co-branded sites or such that don't necessarily use a domain name that you're necessarily familiar with. And then in case you are living in Jacksonville or close to it, just want to point out that B-Site Jacksonville is uh, coming up. B-Sites Jacks.org, October 14th. I'm supposed to speak there. I don't see an official schedule up yet, uh, but I just want to make sure that you put in your calendar and I think uh, you can already sort of uh, get the tickets uh, for the event. We'll also add a link in the show notes. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.